Welcome back everybody. I'm excited to introduce my 2010 Mini Cooper S to the build list. Obviously, it's a little bit different than the 72 BMW, uh, but it's a completely different animal. What I want to do with this is turn this into a streetable track monster. So there's not really much staying in this car. There's engines going to be swapped, the turbo is going to change, the clutch is going to change, the brakes are going to change, the suspension is going to change. Pretty much everything's going to change except the aesthetics of the car. I want to keep it pretty classic looking. I like the, the lines of the Mini. I fell in love with the Mini a couple years ago when I was driving one in Greece, and ever since then I wanted one, so I bought it and still love it since. And it's a pretty abusive relationship. The car in its current state has a thicker rear sway bar, some polyurethane bushings, is sitting on Pilot Super Sports, and has a AEM air intake. But other than that, it's pretty stock. So we've got a pretty good baseline to work with. It's got about 160,000 kilometers or 100,000 miles. I've put about 100,000 of those kilometers on this car. I've driven this car from Toronto to Montreal, to New York, to Chicago, to Pittsburgh. I love this thing and I drive it year round. I've had this car for about two and a half years and I've tracked it for the most part of its life. One of the reasons why I like tracking the Mini is it's got a very connected feel to the road and the chassis is really well set up and you can just dive bomb into turns really, really well. So in a tight track, it's where bigger cars have harder time putting down the power. The Mini really excels on whooping their ass. Before we do any major modifications to the Mini, one of the most important things to do is addressing the lack of gauges on the Mini. Pretty much all we have is a tachometer and a speedometer, which if you're tracking or doing spirited driving, you know that that's not enough information, especially when you're pushing your car. Having things like coolant temp, oil temp, or just a boost gauge really make a difference to make sure you're not stressing your engine, and also so you can perform better as a driver. For me, that was a big issue. I was driving from Pittsburgh to Waterloo, and I didn't know I had a radiator leak. And while I was driving, coolant pretty much dumped over the entire highway. And by the time I was notified, it was a engine overheating symbol. Now there's many ways to address Mini's lack of information. You could have a cluster of gauges, but for me, I wanted it for a stock look and also wanted something a little bit sleeker and something that is simple to install. So the guys down at P3 Cars sent me their digital interface gauge and it's awesome. It is custom built for the Mini and they do a bunch of different custom gauges for cars and it looks like it came stock, which is really nice. What's great about it is it's a bunch of different measurements in one. So just with a couple clicks, we can check uh, boost, we can check coolant temp, oil temp, or even zero to 100 um, real quick. <laughs> First, what you're gonna to wanna to do is lower the steering column and bring it closest to you. And then take an interior pry tool and just pop this piece out like so. And you're just gonna to have to maneuver this out a little bit. And just like that. This side of the P3 digital gauge and then just slide it in to line up with the side interior. Next, pull this rubber seal back so you can feed the cord behind and through. Next step is to loosen the door trim and then get in here with and pop this open. After we've pulled the display cord out to the side and we've dropped the diagnostics cable plug down, all we do is we plug the OBD reader into the car, which is pretty simple. Plug the control box in, plug in the display cable. I don't want these extra wires hanging around. 
And so I don't want to stuff it in, so I'm going to use some deep zip ties to clean it up and so I don't hear some annoying rattling in the dash. Before you close up everything, just make sure that it works. Ooh. So installation was really simple. To recap, all you do is you take off this piece of the dash, slide on the digital interface, pull the cords out here, plug in the computer box with the digital gauge and then connect it with the OBD and that's literally all there is to it. Um, obviously, if you've got some zip ties, they make a big difference and don't use a screwdriver. Uh, these are like 10 bucks. Uh, these uh, interior or pry bar tools are you know, really convenient and I've used them countless times to um, you know, save myself from damaging uh, you know, the interior. So, makes a big difference. Um, I love it. So let's take it out for a spin and see how it goes. It's pretty expansive in terms of what you have options to sit for. So what I'll do is I'll just keep it on boost for now and we'll give it a shot, see how it is. Wow. Obviously the car is also not running on full power right now uh, with the engine being uh, pretty wounded right now, so we're gonna do a better test once we have a better, once we have swapped the engine in. Um, but it's still, it's pretty cool that you can just, you know, you can do that test right on the fly. Uh, having the boost gauge is really great, especially when you're on the track and you're trying to keep, uh, keep boost in the turns. So um, I actually think this is a pretty amazing value for what you're paying. Uh, coolant temperature, obviously for me, like if I had this, you know, I would have seen that the coolant had spiked up to 200 degrees, had burnt all the oil, and um, you know, I would have been able to pull over and address it. Thanks for watching, I'm really excited to kick off the Mini's build. And coming up in the next couple weeks, we've got this sexy intercooler that Outmotoring has sent us with some NM uh, inlet and outlet pipes, as well as an engine swap because the pistons destroyed the block. Well, they didn't destroy them, but it's messy. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and like. And if you have any questions or comments, questions or comments, questions or comments. Yes. <laughs> if you have any questions or comments, don't forget to drop them below. Stay tuned. Thanks a lot. See you later.